there's a scene in Yuri on Ice that sticks out to me. It's near the end of the series, after all is said and done, and Yuri wins second place at the Barcelona Figure Skating Grand Prix Final. Yuri promises his coach and now lover, Victor, that he will take home the gold medal at next season's Figure Skating World Grand Prix. And when he promises this, there's such a wild burst of ambition and determination in his voice, as if he's been completely reborn anew, and knows within his very soul that he is destined for first place. The series then ends with one final scene. Time has passed, and we see Yuri back in his hometown as he meets up with Victor and gets ready to set out for his next journey to become the world figure skating champion. And this scene is just so beautiful because it feels like a fresh new start. Like Yuri is no longer that scared, anxious person from the beginning of the series, but now has the potential to change the world. And when you see those final words appear on screen, see you next level, all you want is to see Yuri make his dream come true. In reality though, this will never happen. Yuri on Ice was released on October 6, 2016 by Studio Mappa. Most of you are probably aware of the now world-renowned animation studio, but at the time of Yuri on Ice's release, Mappa was still a fairly new studio. Despite this, however, it had tons of talent behind it, primarily thanks to its founder, Masao Maruyama. We're not gonna get into the origins of Mappa in this video, but if you wanna know more about the now famous studio's founding, feel free to check out this video where we cover it. All you really need to know is that that Maruyama is a living legend of the anime industry, and thus would be able to supply the studio with an amount of legitimacy that pretty much guaranteed that anyone in the industry would want to work there. Two of these people just so happened to be Sayo Yamamoto and Mitsuro Kubo, Yuri on Ice's creators. Kubo had worked on a few small projects before Yuri on Ice, but the big name to talk about here is Sayo Yamamoto, Yuri on Ice's director and co-writer. At this point, she had worked as a director on several popular anime series like Edeka 7, Samurai Shampoo, and Panty and Stocking all beloved and critically acclaimed anime. This wasn't some kind of small project by an up and coming director. Yuri on Ice had huge talent behind it. And this is evident just by looking at the show itself. Now I'm just gonna be upfront here. I do not care about figure skating. Like you could not pay me to watch figure skating. It is about as far removed from my personal interests as you can get. And yet when I watch Yuri on Ice, I am enthralled. On a technical level, this anime is breathtaking. The characters are animated in a way that both emulate the way figure skaters move in reality, but at the same time uses the advantages of animation to elevate these sequences and make them even more eye-catching. No doubt this is thanks to series choreographer and real-life figure skater Kenji Miyamoto, who wrote and choreographed every dance sequence in Yuri on Ice. It is abundantly clear that he cared about this show, going so far as to even provide all of the sound effects for when the characters are skating. All of those sounds are him, and what's even crazier is that none of the skating sounds in Yuri on Ice are reused. They're all unique to that specific sequence, and even if a single sequence is repeated multiple times, the sounds still change depending on the venue that the characters are in. On top of this, in the early episodes of Yuri on Ice, every character was given a different key animator to help make each of these sequences stand out from each each other. At one point, Yuri on Ice even had an average of 48 key animators per episode, the most out of any anime from the fall 2016 anime season. It's clear that Yuri on Ice was a labor of love from a technical standpoint, but it doesn't end there. Anyone who has at least heard of Yuri on Ice are probably aware of two things about it, figure skating and gay. 
<laughs> it's no secret at this point that the romance between up-and-comer Yuri Kotsky and renowned figure skating legend Viktor Nikiforov is at the center of Yuri on Ice. But this in and of itself isn't particularly groundbreaking. Yaoi, which is a subgenre of anime and manga that focuses on gay male relationships, has always been a popular fixture in anime and manga. And this was no different in 2016 when Yuri on Ice exploded in popularity. So then why exactly is it that so much media limelight is given to this relationship in particular? While this isn't the first anime with the same-sex couple at the forefront, it's one of the first to present a story that isn't strictly sexual and is mutual. Yuri and Victor complement each other, but both also admit that they've grown as people because of the presence of the other. The equality in the relationship is revolutionary, even if it wasn't the first to depict one. You can assign the Seme or Uke label to Victor and Yuri, but when it comes to their psychological bond, it's more equal. Yuri and Victor aren't just another gay anime couple. They're almost real. This is exactly how I felt when watching Yuri on Ice. I'm just gonna go ahead and admit, I'm a sucker for romance. I think it's incredibly riveting seeing how two different individual characters can come together and find a mutual understanding and attraction for one another. But it also needs to be nuanced and feel realistic. Humans are incredibly complicated creatures and will have a whole slew of reasons why they fall in love with a particular individual. And I love when an anime is is able to delve into these different reasons for mutual attraction. I feel like a lot of the appeal of Yaoi comes just from the simple fact that the characters are gay, but I honestly never even thought about either character's gender when watching the romance in Yuri on Ice unfold. It just felt like two incredibly vulnerable individuals learning about each other and growing through one another. Which, I mean, that's what relationships, you know, are and what makes the romance between Yuri and Victor feel so real and compelling. I mean, look, they even get to have a cute little scene where Yuri proposes to Victor, which at the time was kind of unheard of in a mainstream anime series. Though I also don't think that the creators were even anticipating the show to become as mainstream as it did. But the sheer quality of Yuri on Ice allowed it to rocket into the pop culture spotlight in such an unprecedented manner. During its run, Katakawa Aski Research Laboratories reported that Yuri on Ice was the most tweeted anime of its season, even beating out an anime like Haikyuu, which if you're in the loop, then I'm sure you understand that a 12 episode original anime about gay figure skaters from a young studio like MAPPA getting more attention than something like Haikyuu? An adaptation of one of the most popular sports manga series of all time is just sheer insanity. Yuri on Ice was a sensation across the globe. Even well-known professional figure skaters like Yevgeny Plushenko, Adam Rippon, and Johnny Ware were talking about it. The latter in particular being very supportive of the anime and mentioning it multiple times during interviews. I broke my rule about one episode per day because I physically couldn't stop watching. Yuri on Ice was on top of the world, and so it only made sense to take advantage of the hype that was surrounding it. It was time to make good on the promise the show left us on. See you next level. And MAPPA intended to deliver in a big way. In April of 2017, the Yuri on Ice movie was announced at the Yuri on Stage exhibition event. There weren't a lot of details about the movie unveiled, but it was a welcomed announcement for all the rabid fans of the series. I mean, Yuri on Ice getting a big budget anime movie? It was a dream! Then 2018 came, and the film's title was finally announced. Yuri on Ice the movie Ice Adolescence. Flash forward to 2019, and finally a teaser trailer is released by MAPPA, showing a young Victor in his prime. And I mean, everything just looked great. It exuded all the quality that you would expect from a MAPPA anime film, and it seemed evident that all the same staff were returning. This was exciting. I mean, yeah, the film had been delayed, but with each passing year, the alluring reality of the Yuri on Ice movie grew even closer. With each passing moment, the movie felt more and more real, like it could release at any moment. Then another year passed, and... No news.
okay, well, that's, I mean, that's not really the end of the world. Map is pretty busy right now, so it only makes sense that it's probably going to take a while to get out. It's not really a big deal. And then another year passes. No news. Okay, well, maybe they're just, you know, holding the information close to their chest. So when they do make another announcement, it'll just be all the more exciting. I'm sure everything's going to turn out great. Then another year passes. No news. With each passing year, Yuri on Ice becomes less and less relevant. People stop talking about it and move on to other anime. But, you know, once the movie comes out, it's going to make a big comeback. It's going to be everywhere again like it was in 2016, right? Another year passes. No news. In April of 2024, just a little over a week ago at the time of this video, it was announced by MAPPA on the official Yuri on Ice movie website that seven years after the movie's announcement, Ice Adolescence had been cancelled. There wasn't any specific reason given, though a lot of people have speculated that it's primarily a money thing. Yuri on Ice in 2024 is just not the same as it was in 2016. It was a sensation back then, but now, after countless delays, Yuri on Ice has kind of faded away from the public consciousness, to the point that it might not be the guaranteed success that it once might have been. And in the climate of the modern day anime industry, that's just a no-go. MAPPA as a studio has changed dramatically since its inception. For better or worse, it's now one of the biggest studios in Japan today, pumping out huge shows like Jujutsu Kaisen, Vinland Saga, and Attack on Titan. And look, I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't like these shows, because I do. But there's a sinking feeling in my gut that MAPPA would rather focus on shows like these, adaptations which are basically guaranteed to make them money hand over fist, than risk putting out some something that might not. Even if that thing they refused to put out was hyped up by them for seven years. And as someone who likes Yuri on Ice, this hurts. I don't think Yuri on Ice is the greatest anime of all time or anything, but watching it made me happy. It made me realize that even if you don't believe in yourself or suffer from crippling anxiety, which I do, that the people in your life that you love the most, well, they're the ones that will help pick you back up. Even if you see nothing within yourself, no talent, no potential, those things are clear as day to the people who love you. And that's a beautiful message. One that I wanted to see culminate in Yuri finally unleashing his full potential and changing the world that he lived in. But now, that'll never happen. Yuri on Ice, in a way, is like ice itself, forever frozen in a moment of cold stagnation, never pushing forward, forever still. And to me, that's the true tragedy of Yuri on Ice.